We've started recording and I am going to start off. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Lenore Walker. I'm a psychologist and um, this is a round table number four being presented by the American Psychological Association's Division 56. This is the division on trauma and we are part of the interdisciplinary task force on COVID-19, which is designed to help mental health professionals and people all over the world deal with the psychological aspects of COVID-19 virus. And our subgroup is one that's dealing with the impact that the virus has had on people who are involved in some way with interpersonal violence. Um, we know that interpersonal violence is on the rise. We have more murders in many of the cities all cities across the United States, unlike some rumors that said only some political, uh, mm -hmm. crosses all political lines. Um, we know that domestic violence is on the rise. We don't know a lot about child abuse. We do know that when we see cases of child abuse, they're very severely hurt. Uh, and we think that's probably because when children are not in school, there are people who, not a lot of eyes on the children and, and many of them are at home and tempers rise, anxieties rise, people get depressed and don't do all the things that they might normally do. And so part of what we designed to bring in these round tables are different activities, different things that people can do to train um, yourselves, to teach your clients, if you're therapists or patients, if you're doctors, um, and uh, also so that you can, if you're not in the professions, but still need it yourself, um, or even if you are in the professions and need it yourself, that you can be using some of these techniques. So we're from all over the world. I'm going to introduce you uh, in a moment to the people who I can see on the call, but there are a lot of people who are not on video um, who are also uh, hopping on. Um, our group, uh, you met Giselle, Dr. Giselle Gaveria. Um, she's here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where I am not in Egypt, even though her background tells us that's where she's traveled. Um, and uh, I, as I said, I'm in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, uh, Dr. Marilyn Safir is from Haifa, Israel. And, and um, Rita Rivera is also from Miami, Florida. Uh, Dr. Dawn Hughes is from New York City. Uh, Dr. Michaela Mendelson is from uh, uh, Boston, uh, Massachusetts. Um, Brittany Geddes is Right now you're from Pennsylvania, right? I think we're Pennsylvania. Um, yeah, I'm from Philly. From Philly, okay. Um, and um, I don't know, Jason Park Salzman, we, you're new to us, but welcome. Um, and maybe afterwards we'll have a chance you can introduce yourself as well. Um, uh, Dr. Patricia Villavicencio uh, Carrillo is from Madrid, Spain, and she's going to be uh, our presenter today. And Dr. Lori Gill, who is from Niagara, Canada. So you can see we're, we're uh, spanning countries as well as cities in the United States. So with that, um, what we typically do on these roundtables is we have a presenter, one or two presenters, uh, we'll see. Um, uh, we may have one of our presenters coming on, another one, we're not sure. Um, but we're gonna turn it over to Dr. Uh, Via Vicencio because she is here and she's going to start. Uh, and then afterwards, we're all gonna discuss what she has presented. So I'm going to ask everybody to mute themselves except for um, Patricia and I will start off and then um, we'll take it from there. So the floor is all yours or the squares, I guess, are all yours. Okay. Thank you so much for introducing me, Lenore. I love you. You know, <laughs> I really deeply love you. 
and you're my mentor. And thanks to uh, the other day I shared with you on uh, WhatsApp <laughs> that I happened to be a volunteer in a shelter in Erie, Pennsylvania. And at that time, I, I'm originally from Peru. So at that time, my, my, my English was scarcely. I, I don't know. I don't remember that well. I spoke German fluently, but uh, English is my third language. So, uh, and I did volunteer uh, uh, in a shelter that happened to let me in as a you know, foreign student. I wasn't not even living in that in Erie, but I think so much uh, that shelter was hospitality house, and they showed me a video of your um, uh, cycle of abuse and a better women's syndrome. And at that time, I was a psychology student. And after a few, few, few years later, like eight, 10, I don't remember, I asked my, one of my teachers if I could do research on better women because at that time and still now, uh, very poor people access to shelters. So me uh, being a foreign Peruvian was like, I, I lived in a third world country. And for me it was strange uh, being in the States and being surrounded by very poor uh, Americans. Most of them were Americans, uh, malnutrition kids. And so, well, that was the start. And now I, I want to share the, uh, I'm a trauma expert after many years of uh, getting training and I do trauma work and an EMDR, EMDR specialist, a clinician. And one day, one of my friends in Germany asked me if we could do something, a project, because she wanted to, to, uh, give ma some uh, financial aid to uh, an NGO. And me as a researcher and a clinician, and she as a um, teacher, German teacher, she's German and a musician, and I love music. And one thing that I, I've been, I think I'm, I'm the person I am, and as a PhD and postdoc and plus, 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 is because my parents uh, put me in, uh, to study in a Swiss school in Lima. And they, uh, one, the major subjects plus German, everything in German, uh, was music and sports. And I was a, a hyperactive, non-attention girl, girl at that time. <laughs> so only because I had music in the program, every, every, I think every day we had music and also sports, I, I'm the person I am right now and I could study. So, and my friend and I, we started searching for writing a project for music. I did a lot of research on neuroscience and music, how music impacts in your brain and, and learning. And so I'm used to the research. And then all of a sudden we found this project in Uganda uh, in the orphanage. Uh, so me as a researcher, what can I do? I'm not now I can say I'm a humanitarian person, but at that time I knew how to write a, a project, that scientific project. So we started writing and then all of a sudden, one of my dearest friends in, in Argentina, Argentina, uh, uh, Claudia Hasenbegovic, she's a lawyer in a um, domestic violence, experts in Argentina told me when I was visiting her that in Uganda there was a program that is going it's called uh, 
transitional justice. And they, I'm not African, I wish I were African at that moment. And still, when I go to Africa, I feel African. And so uh, I applied for the uh, a scholarship, a grant, and they gave me the grant, even though I'm not a, a African. I'm not a transition, I was not a transition uh, justice expert. Then I had the chance to visit the kids. And before going to uh, Uganda, I asked EMDR Association of Spain if they could support me because the African uh, uh, Refugee uh, Law Project financed my, they gave me the grant, but not the ticket. And EMDR Spain said, when I said, Elisa, I'm going to Uganda. They said, oh, we're very interested in Uganda. I said, how come? I, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, listen, we want to support you. So, uh, uh, to make this story short, um, I wrote a couple of uh, uh, projects that EMDR Spain supported me. And my hospital also supported me going to Uganda, they give, giving me a, a leave. A humanitarian leave. So uh, when I went there, what can a clinician do? That's one thing that us as clinicians, how could we transfer our knowledge to the community? And this is something that uh, matters to us right now during COVID times, uh, especially because the whole community, international community, has been affected. And especially, you know, the, the violence has increased, as Lenore has uh, told us. I I've happened to talk to my friend in, in Uganda, and she's in, uh, in charge of, she's the director of FAIR um, Foundation for in, Integrated Rural uh, Development. And they take care of women, uh, abducted during the war that happened 20 years ago and still are suffering the consequences of the abductions by the Lord of Resistance Army. So uh, after meeting Harriet, she said, please, we need people like you coming to Uganda and do some trauma work. But to be responsible and ethical, you can open the wounds of uh, uh, a person and then leave and say bye. And that's what we do in our uh, office. We cannot just open a, come on, uh, goodbye and see you whenever. So I said, I cannot do trauma work because I will stay only a week or 10 days at the maximum. So let's do what we have planned. Uh, take music and sports that and, and create what we ask our patients to do when they have a depressed mood. Uh, do things to cheer you up and shake off, right? <laughs> and how can we do that uh, in person? So uh, we uh, propose a project where we could, we, that we will bring uh, sports and music and the, uh, share our uh, music and songs and games, well, our childhood games and theirs uh, in Lira in a very small community at the time. So uh, these people, uh, to have an, a big picture, uh, it has been 20 years after the war and they are still suffering the physical wounds of the, uh, the trauma. They were sexual abuse as sexual war uh, uh, violence. And they were used as carriers. They uh, forced women to uh, get pregnant of their kids and do took those kids uh, and uh, make them to be soldiers and it's one thing that still in the interna international agendas, uh, it started in, 
during the war in Bosnia that those kids uh, that are were born after sexual abuse, uh, they don't have an identity, a citizenship identity. That's one thing. But they came to us, and uh, I want to share uh, the activities we made. So they have, they are unnourished, they hardly eat once a day, and they hardly can uh, work. And so they, uh, Harriet told me, listen we have to be careful because these people need so we invited them to have uh, lunch with us we pay for the transport and so they they wore what they are wearing in this videos are the best dresses they have and so uh if you see the first video their faces and so we made a game let me try to see if i can share the um, we introduce ourselves using a bowl. So let's play, introduce us with a, a small bowl, and the one who reached, uh, cut, caught the ball will introduce themselves. So we started doing this, and then explaining that we will be working, uh, well, the playing and dancing and singing and sharing songs. And I, we explain the how we are going to make pictures, body pictures with the butterfly hawk. After feeling a joy and happiness with these activities, uh, we told them that we'll check our body, do a body scan. Of course, they, were, they translated to the local language. And not even my friend understands that they are local, local language. They are different dialects between different communities. And so the, the, um, there was the, like the chief or the leader of the community that translated into their language. And so we took the butterfly hug and we play a lot. So these people started slow and then it was amazing. Let me try to share the, uh, what I've been working on this. And so you can see a bit what I've prepared. A moment. Well, I'll try to do something else. And then, sh uh, I don't know, let me see. One thing that I want you to do while I'm opening this file is each of you on the screen to think about your own games while you were kids, okay? What kind of games you, you used to play with your friends in your neighborhood? Try to picture those games in your mind and the feelings you had. When you have it, if somebody wants to share them, please. Anybody wants to share uh, one of the games that you, sh uh, you play with us being a kid? You can go right ahead and unmute yourselves. Yes, you can. That's exactly. I was going to say you can go ahead. Whoever's on there, just unmute yourself and yeah. speak we up. We used to play games where we would two people would clap hands to each with each other. So one of them we used to sing. I don't know if anybody. I sang it with my kids too. Was playmate, come out and play with me. 
and bring your dollies three. Climb up my apple tree, fly down my rainbow, into my cellar door, and we'll be jolly friends forever more, 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 more. I see other people did it too. <laughs> Any others? How about you bring around a rosy pocket full of posy? Ashes, ashes, all fall down. There were more words that I remember them. <laughs> I'm thinking about games like tag and hide, hide and seek. Mm -hmm. What about you, Yisa? You know, it's interesting because uh, a lot of my time I, during the summers and the holidays, I spent it in Colombia. So we had things that we called like shusha or where we, it was like freeze tag or finding different colors running around. We also had a couple of um, Spanish songs that we would sing. But I right now I was like thinking of how how we would sing him. But I, there was one about palo palito, palo palito, palo palito, see, and then and it was a whole game towards it. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of games. And I was like thinking, I'm like, what were the songs that we used to sing? Lori, what about you in Canada? Oh, I was trying to remember. Um, I think a lot of the stuff that's been mentioned, like hide and seek, ring around the rosy. Um, we did like patty cake. So, you know, a lot of the stuff that's been shared already. Um, and I was trying to think of something more kind of specific to my family that we did. But yeah, a lot of like with my cousins, we often just played hide and seek and tag and yeah, make believe, right? With dolls or whatever. So, yeah, lots of singing. And what about Rita? I actually remember the Palo Palito song that I just was singing. We sang a lot of Spanish songs, mostly. Great. And any, any of our participants um, who are not video, we can't see them, but jump in. Unmute yourself. I don't know if you can unmute yourself, but. Uh, try to and, and jump in. And I also think about like a little bit about musical chairs and just how you would get so into it. Just musical chairs I feel like is so uh, universal. Mm -hmm. And Michaela, did you share any of your games? So hide and seek and tag. Those would be, if someone mentioned musical chairs. Uh, I remember at, at birthday parties, we used to play a game. Um, it may have a different name here. I grew up in South Africa called Pass the Parcel, which was, which was basically like a, a little toy um, that was wrapped up in many different layers of newspaper and it would go around. And every time the music stopped, you'd take off uh, one layer of wrapping. Then it would go oh. around until the next person, you take off another. And the person who ended up with the, the final thing got the, 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 the prize at the end of the game. That's like hot potato, we called it, I think. <laughs> and then I, we have a, one of our viewers saying that they used to jump a lot of rope and throw small sand pockets. <laughs> and then somebody just mentioned, oh, that we used to call it a hot potato, I think. That was Lori as well. <laughs> and you know, I seven up. Ah, yes, <laughs> seven up, definitely one. That almost reminds me even the, in the classroom. Mm -hmm. We used to play that heads up, seven up in the classroom. Yes, I always played it in school. That one or who stole the eraser, I feel like, was another one too. I don't know if anybody got to play that one, but in New York, when I was growing up in New York, that's something that was vividly in my mind. Who stole the eraser? One of us would go. Hopscotch or Potsy. Remember yes. we used to draw on the walk on the sidewalk and then we would hop, throw something on a number and then hop until you could pick it up. Jump rope, I was always the steady ender because I could never jump. 
Okay, so uh, as you see, every you know when you share this, uh, I smile. So when you share something happy, the other one smiles because mm -hmm. connects to the play you've been through as a kid, right? And one thing that I'm so sorry, I not I cannot share the my presentation, but I'll share it in uh, Facebook. One thing that we need to uh, uh, realize is that when children are abused uh, or, you know, people, especially children, play is terrifying. So it's a way of diagnose, a, a way that we can diagnostic if a, a kid has been through abuse and they play and replay what they been through, through play. So uh, I say that uh, abuse infects, as COVID does, your playing abilities. So uh, trauma infects the play. And so kids no longer can play as they should. That's one thing that we lose if we've been through abuse during childhood or any stressful and traumatic experience not has not be should not be only abuse but trauma as COVID for example their kids are not being able to play and also adults in western societies and yeah in in a way and around the world uh, they ask us not to play. We need to be responsible, right? So a lot of work and the time for us to play is lost. And that's how easily people get depressed. So when we are in front of somebody who is depressed and we used to assess what they do in their daily life, depression cuts off any way of feeling Re, uh, reward that or you know one of the symptoms is that you don't feel as happy as you felt and you don't enjoy things as much as you did in the past that's one thing but trauma does this even though trauma takes away has taken away their lives in this community what a uh, I always say is I work in trauma because you see the light through their recovery. So uh, humans have the capacity and we as experts uh, are only the guides to show them how to recover. Uh, fortunately, if they get through the right hands, right? But still, how to improve and shake up our depressed mood is trying to connect with experiences in the past plus doing something active. And now uh, when you share it, not only thought about it, I smile and everyone one in the screen were smiling and say, ah, oh, yes, rope and jump in. And so we, it's universal. Uh, right? So we did that and let me say what was our goal is bring music and sports. So we shared the music and they did, they sang their songs and danced their dance and we took part of it. Uh, um, because I, I filmed a lot, I could not uh, take part of all the games they were through because I wanted to document. But uh, let me see if I can share the video and give the, the possibility to, uh, so I can say share, right? Where is the, ah, compartir pantalla is here. Esta anfitriona ha decidido compartir la pantalla. Ok. Um, opening. Eh, 
y eh, video Patricia can you see my screen no. Is there a button in the left hand corner that says share? Okay, let me uh, push that. Okay, maybe. left on the left. On the right hand corner, rather. Right Wait. Hand. Mm, here. On the right. Mm. Uh, if mm. once the once it's up. Compartir pantalla is uh, the Push, but some, it, the, it says that uh, somebody, you know, the, the, uh, Giselle, um, en castellano me pone, el, anfit el anfitrión inhabilitó la función de compartir las pantallas de los participantes. You have to allow me. I don't know, it doesn't allow me to do it. Giselle, make her, make her a co-host. Make her the co-host. Yeah, I don't think she's a co-host. You there already? You, I can't hear you. Yes, I did. We're all co-hosts, but I made uh, Patricia the host completely. Okay. Do you see my, wait, let me try to do it again. Okay. Do you see it? Yeah, there you go. Started it, there you yes. go. Here we go. Yay. Okay. These are the kids. So my my uh, friend and guitar teacher uh, Rodrigo Martin uh, offered his uh, vacation time to come to Jinja and and teach them music and and that's our name EMDR Uganda team. Uh, let me, <laughs> and these are, okay, wait a minute, let, let me pass this, it's in Spanish, and here, These are Mopensi children who are much better than the ones in the north than part of Uganda right now. We got a grant for them and a foundation here in Spain, very rich people are financing their uh, uh, studies and health care in Uganda. So now I'm teaching them what to do, the, the butterfly hug, uh, do after, right after having fun. And we did also drawing their experiences. Lots of uh, activities. We took them to a water park and they loved it. And see, well, you teach the kids not to do it that fast, but it worked. So in EMDR, the flops for installing positive resources, you don't need to do it, not even more than six. So this, that voice is Eduardo. And Chavi, that little one, in May, could hardly walk, and this is December. 
and Tubby wants rescue. I'm very, uh, I'm very unnourished. And May, she always wanted me to uh, hold her. And look, in December, she won the Olympics. <laughs> so it's home. Uh, that's Tubby, I love her. She's a champion. And now it's uh, uh, Lyra. People, uh, they were abducted during the war time, and, and still, you know, uh, uh, seeing the difference between the kids in uh, Mupensi who are taking care of, they eat three times a day, and these people, and they make me wear this dress that I, a designer in Guru made that beautiful dress for one day. And that's Harriet Adam. I'm sorry. So for me, that was a very touching uh, statement. They felt young, I think. They felt life in, in them, despite the fact that they went through all the abuse. Even those that had health challenges, they have health challenges. Some of them need surgery. Some of them uh, just need to talk to the doctor. But they jumped. They jumped. Why? They thought this was a new approach, a new strategy that they hadn't done in a very, very long time. It was like stress relief for them, and it brought a smile on each one of them that was there. Even the men were busy jumping. So there are men that suffered sexual violence during war. There is a group of men that came out in Uganda saying what that happened to them. And there are many men around the world that are coming out and saying that they have suffered sexual violence during war. <laughs> and then I say thank you in their language. And this is Gifty in Mupensi. And this is Stella, the coordinator at the orphanage. And we say thank you to MDR Spain. Okay. If you have any questions, I'll be happy uh, to share them. One thing is that there is a Harriet in our screen. Thank you for sharing. Come in. Thank you, Harriet. Uh, I'm so honored. Uh, uh, Harriet and all her family uh, 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 siblings were, went to the university and most of them stay in the country to contribute to their, to their community. And it's something that I really admire because most of people that have their education, they leave the country and you, Harriet, and your family stay. <laughs> Harriet, can Harriet say a few words? Yes, please. Uh, where, where are you? Where, yourself. Where are you from, Harriet? Unmute yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to meet all of you. And uh, I'm from Uganda. 
Are but you in my Uganda home now? Yes. You're I'm in, in Uganda Canada. now. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exciting. Uh, so I'm in the in the city right now in Kampala, but my home is in the north, uh, northern Uganda. So I'm in the city now because Patricia told me about this program. I decided to stay around so I can have very good internet connection with everyone. So I'm really happy to meet all of you in your various parts of the world. Um, I come from a community that was affected by the war uh, for over 20 years. Part of my family was also affected. Uh, but I'm happy to tell you that it's not been easy for us, but we've done all we can to support the women, the children who were sexually abused in the time of the conflict. And uh, we have over 200 women uh, that we support and over 200 children and girls. And uh, in the post-conflict community now, most of our work is to support uh, those that were sexually abused through their mental health um, healing. So it's, it's part of the work that we do and also help uh, the women who are sexually abused through economic empowerment program to make sure they're able to sustain their homes given the fact that uh, uh, they're not able to do hard labor. So they need some small monies to help them run their homes and uh, most of them are widows, they don't have husbands, uh, they have children who are orphans. Uh, most of these children came into place not because they wanted, but because of the atrocities that they went through. And uh, with Patricia, we've been really helping them to through mental health care and uh, helping them support the children, uh, to take them to school. Those are some of the challenges they have. So we try to support them through economic empowerment so they're able to have some small money to send their children to school because we believe that these children have a right to education. And uh, the women and girls also who are sexually abused, most of them have challenges of uh, having access to health care like surgeries. Some of them are still struggling with um, injuries that they incurred during the time of, of the sexual violence. So some of them still need surgery support, but these are things that are not easy to come out because surgery is very expensive. So for us as a community-based organization, we can only support them where we can. And reaching out, meeting a number of you who are in this area of IPVs for me, makes me learn that there's a whole community out there that I didn't know about. And I'm happy to meet all of you and, and reach out to you and share with you our story because it makes me stronger to know there is actually a bigger community that is going through this, but also is also handling this. It's very hard for someone like me in my small community to do all this. It's heavy work, I must say. And Patricia had a test of it. Even us as the community people, sometimes it's hard on us and we don't have people to take care of us because we have to be strong for those that are going through all these uh, mental challenges, physical, emotional challenges. So reaching out to this community and sharing today is a very big privilege for me and I'm happy to meet all of you, wherever you are. <laughs> Well, we are very happy to meet you as well. How has, COVID, how has COVID, the COVID virus, affected your community? Well, the COVID virus has truly affected the community uh, because like now the women are not able to engage in the economic activities they had started. Mm -hmm. All this has come to a standstill. And because of this, it has contributed to other challenges like domestic violence and intimate partner violence in the homes has actually increased. And we've also in, uh, experienced a lot of uh, sexual violence against children. 
Mm. And this is because the children are not in schools, they've been exposed to the challenges in the community. So it's become a bigger challenge now. And uh, given the fact that we don't have as much funding to help us to, to reach out the entire community. So sexual violence in this time of COVID and violence against children has again increased. And then mental challenges is another issue for these communities because they've been trying to, 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 to pick themselves up, given the fact that what they experience, they've been trying to, to move on, to try to heal. But now COVID-19 comes in and hits them again, bringing a number of challenges within the households. So this again has contributed again to a different uh, point of harm, which we don't even know how to handle now. Because it's becoming too much, we're handling the children, or the parents, the women. So issues of uh, mental health, economic, and then violence within the homes and violence against children. So COVID-19, instead of, it has literally taken us back to the steps we had taken to improve the community. So that's, that's what we are fight, we are struggling with right now violence against children, but also the mental stability within the homes. Couples are fighting each other. Intimate partner violence has short because uh, of the struggles within the households as well. So well, those I, are some I, of the challenges. I don't know if it will make you feel better or worse, but what you are going through is happening every place across the world. Yeah, Domestic violence that's very true. At least three times more, uh, mm -hmm. according to the measures that they've yes. taken. Yes. Um, and yeah. I think it's much more than that. And the uh, yeah. violence against children, sexual violence, physical violence, so that the, none of us have a lot of assistance. Uh, that's yeah. why we get together in these kinds of groups to support yes. ourselves. Exactly. We're all dealing <laughs> exactly. with the unknown. These kind of things. Thing on top of another, on top of another. So, yes. And I think this, for me, this platform is good because it builds a community of social support, which yes. is not yes. out there. So when I meet uh, strong women who are helping each other, it's, it's something that we can always appreciate and know that there's someone there to hold each other's hand. And these support groups are very important because they make us stronger, even if we're going through something, it helps us to know how do we take care of each other? How do you take care of yourself amidst the kind of work we do to help those that are also struggling? And uh, I'm really happy to meet this group lovely. and be part of this group. Well, it's lovely to Thank meet you. you. One of the interesting to things you too. about round tables is that you never know where they're going to go. <laughs> 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 but one thing that I want to finish saying that uh, although there are happening terrible, terrible things happen in the world, there are people like us that we are together mm -hmm. and fight for uh, women and uh, children's rights. And during COVID times, uh, we we want to make this uh, to everyone to know that. Uh, domestic violence has increased, sexual abuse has increased, and we cannot stop make these things visible around the world, and, and we can do something about it. Yes, and you are always welcome. Whenever we are around, please always feel free, Harriet, uh, to join us. We would love to Thank have you. Absolutely, you. absolutely. absolutely. We would Thank love you. to have you. Unfortunately, we're about the end of our time. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's okay. I'll make sure next time I join in on time as well. Next no, no. week, we're going to start again at promptly this time at 12 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> uh, Eastern time, New York time is 12 o'clock. Yeah. We can figure out from there. Um, okay. I want to thank everybody for, for uh, hanging in with us today. Uh, Patricia, especially, uh, you have brought us such gifts today that I want to thank you so much oh, for okay. everybody. Um, Thank and you so week, much. Next I wish, week I, week, I, wish I could be everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> next week we'll have more Thank you. <laughs> each other. We need our, our support. That's what uh, yes. I said. 
We the butterfly need to the support it. system. <laughs> I love you all. Oh, and this we is love you from Uganda. <laughs> Thank you so much, Eleanor, for the initiative, for being such a great mentor and person, and for giving your, your knowledge to everyone. We follow you. We love you so much. <laughs> I want to thank you all for joining us. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram next week at 12 New York time, Eastern time. You can uh, see us again and we will be having a discussion with, about mindfulness. And this has been recorded, so we'll see. We hope that the re recording will come out. It will have it for everybody. And it's usually posted on the Facebook uh, page. So you could definitely watch it as many times as you want. Uh, a lot of our videos are getting either reshared or a lot of people are viewing it. So we're, we're going up there. So I just- yes, Harry, Harry, make sure you have the COVID IPV um, uh, group number on the Facebook page if you get onto the internet, when you have internet, because we, we post all okay. the- time. And you can participate if okay. you aren't, if you don't, you can't get onto Zoom, you can participate by messaging us on the, um, on the Facebook. On the Facebook. Okay. You can watch the Facebook videos and message us and then we can say hello and obviously uh, comment if you're commenting on it. So there's several ways okay. We're trying to make it broad for everyone. Okay, I'll do that. Wanna thank you uh, for thank joining you for us. Time and participation. Adios. 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 Ciao. Hasta la semana que viene. Arrivederci. Ciao. Yeah. <laughs>